Today I will teach you how to predict the cue ball path by understanding the physics of the cue ball and I will announce the winner of the Aromid pool ball set. What we are going to talk about in this lesson is the key to understanding the cue ball behavior, so it's very important. At the beginning it's pretty basic, but towards the end we are going deeper into the topic. I already talked a little bit about the force of the cue ball in my video Understanding the Cue Ball. So if you're interested in learning about the behavior of the cue ball, you should consider watching that one as well. It's also very important that you understand the principle of the tangent line. I've put both links in the video description. And now I think it's finally time to discuss the force of the cue ball in more detail. So let's start. The first thing we need to understand is that if we apply force, that means high or low, the cue ball always wants to move towards its original direction. This direction can never be changed and will always be the direction that you're shooting to, no matter if you're having a straight in shot or a shot with an angle. Pretty simple, isn't it? The force is basically how intense the cue ball wants to go into that direction, and this is the part we can manipulate. To make things easy, let's first have a look at straight in shots, then we're going to look at cut shots. I will also show you what the force causes the cue ball to do when hitting a rail. And at the end I will show you a perfect example for that principle from the final of the US Open 2019 between Josh Filler and Jeff DeLuna. We can remove any force by playing a stop shot. In this case the cue ball will of course just stop. This is because the cue ball has no rotation on it when hitting the object ball. When we are playing a normal rolling cue ball, the natural force will always bring us forwards. This is caused by the small natural forward rotation of a rolling cue ball, which will push the ball forwards after impact. The natural force can also be supported by playing high on the cue ball. Now the cue ball has more forward rotation on it when hitting the object ball. And of course we can also manipulate the natural force in a way so that the cue ball goes to the opposite direction by playing low on the cue ball. The cue ball will now draw back because of the backwards rotation when hitting the 9 ball. Probably so far this wasn't something special or new for you, so now let's have a look on different cut shots. When cutting a ball, the principles stay the same. The cue ball still wants to go towards the direction that you're shooting to. However, it will tend to deviate more or less depending on how much high or low you're hitting. Let's have a look at a cut shot with a small angle first. The original path is now towards this direction. Again, we start with a stop shot. Remember, that means we're making sure that after impact, there is no rotation on the cue ball. In this case, the cue ball will just move straight along the tangent line. And now let's use a rolling cue ball where the rotation isn't that big. So the cue ball starts following the tangent line for a very short time, not even visible for us. And then as long as the forward rotation is present on the cue ball, it wants to leave the tangent line towards its original direction. When the rotation is lost and the cue ball is rolling, it will roll towards the current direction. If we increase the force by hitting high with just a little more speed so that the forward rotation is still present when hitting the object ball, the cue ball will leave the tangent line a tiny bit later because of the increased speed. But the forwards rotation is higher and therefore longer present, so this time we could hit the rail a little more towards the right. Are we able to send the cue ball even closer to the corner pocket by adding more follow on the cue ball? Let's see what happens if we increase the force even more. We use more power to make sure that the cue ball hits the 9 ball with enough spin on it, because the rotation gets lost on its way if we hit too soft and transfers into a normal rolling cue ball again. The cue ball now leaves the tangent line later than before and the curve that the cue ball makes is larger. So we weren't able to contact the rail closer to the corner pocket. Why is that? The increased amount of spin will cause the cue ball to rotate more, but this means it will also take longer until the forward spin will grab on the cloth and the larger curve is caused by the increased force. 
Now let's do this with a draw shot. Again, the cue ball is on the tangent line a very short time and then leaves it towards the direction of force. If we increase the draw with more power and follow through, the exact same principle happens. The cue ball stays now longer on the tangent line, but the curve will be larger. That's why a softer shot with more quality and follow through is more efficient if you want to draw the cue ball on shots with an angle. On straight shots this doesn't matter because it will just take the cue ball a little longer until the spin grabs on the cloth, but it won't change the path. On cut shots however it will change the path because the cue ball will move longer along the tangent line until the spin grabs. However you can also use that hard draw shot for example to curve around balls before you want the draw to grab on the table. The question is now, what happens if we use a larger angle and repeat everything? The tangent line will stay the same of course, that means if we remove the force by playing a stun shot, which is a stop shot, the cue ball will travel along the same path as on the shot with less angle. But the important thing we have to be aware of is, that now the direction that the cue ball wants to go to is towards this direction. And that's why it becomes impossible to bring the cue ball towards this part of the rail again with follow, because the direction of the force has changed. If we compare those two shots where I was playing the same amount of high with the same speed, you see the difference. And of course, it's the same principle when drawing a ball. If we extend the angle to a 90 degree cut shot, which is impossible to make here, the force of the cue ball and the tangent line will be identical. So to summarize it, a stop shot ensures that there is no rotation on the cue ball right after the impact and the cue ball moves along the tangent line or stops dead on on straightened shots. The straighter a shot is, the further and faster you can leave the tangent line. The more angle you have, that means the more you have to cut a ball, the closer the cue ball will move towards the tangent line. More force with a harder shot means that the cue ball will stay longer on the tangent line, but then it will also make a larger curve. Do you remember my video about when to use low in spin? The shot that I was playing here could only be played with outside spin and not with low. And that's because the force of the cue ball when drawing the ball was just bringing us towards this direction and not up table. And that's also why with decreasing angle you could use more low on the cue ball. This is by the way the most successful video on my channel, so you might want to have a look. Link is in the description. Ok, now I'm going to show you how the rotation manipulates the cue ball path after contacting a rail and then I will show you the perfect example shot from Chev de Luna. Let's assume we hit the rail with this angle. This is the natural path of the cue ball and we can't hit the 9 ball. But what happens if we hit high on the cue ball? The angle widens. And now you should know why. The force of the cue ball is towards this direction and the force doesn't change even after hitting a rail. So the cue ball travels along this path but the rotation tries to bring the cue ball towards this direction. And what happens if we hit low? Of course the rotation of the cue ball now wants to bring us towards this direction. That's why the angle closes so much. So even if you're not hitting left or right English on the cue ball, and not changing the speed, high and low can have a big impact on the cue ball path. If you want to have more information on the topic, check out my video, changing the angle when hitting a rail. And here is the shot from Jeff De Luna. Well, you talked about his cue power. <laughs> How about that? So the cue ball hit the free ball, 
because of the powerful shot it traveled along the tangent line, hit the 9 ball, the spin grabbed on the cloth and the cue ball went along its initial direction up table. And that's the perfect example that the direction never changes. Only the force can be lost, that means the rotation. But he hit the cue ball very hard so that this didn't happen. Now I'm going to announce the winner of the Aramid Pupo set. Over 950 people commented under the video and that's pretty amazing. So thank you for all your comments, I've read every single one of it. Since I definitely don't want to have the burden of choosing one of you guys, I'm using this website where you can choose a random comment. And now let's press the button. And the winner is... Laurie Acton. I really hope I pronounced your name right. Thanks a lot for your comment. You will receive a brand new set of Aramid Pooh Balls. Congratulations and thanks to Aramid for sponsoring. And to all my other subscribers who didn't win this time, I'm really sorry, but I'm sure in the future I will start some more raffles. Promised. Well, as you may saw, a lot of work went into this video, so if you liked it, be so kind and leave me a thumbs up or even a comment. And if you're one of the 80% of my viewers that aren't subscribed yet, consider subscribing. Thanks for watching guys, and as always, see you in the next lesson. Take care.